for those who don't know, this is a daily reading from my book, A Gracious Space for Fall. It comes in a book format, just like this, which you can find on Amazon if you want. My last name is Julie, uh, is Bogart, <laughs> Julie Bogart. So if you look that up, it comes right up. But you can also buy a digital version for your Kindle, which is what this is, Kindle. And um, you can find that in our store. If you go to bravewriter.com slash GS fall for gracious space fall, you can buy the digital version. And I know for those of you who live in places like Canada, hey, Texas, <laughs> they always, all caps for Texas, Virginia, exactly. Um, if you live in Canada or Britain or New Zealand or Australia, the digital form is your best choice. You don't have to pay shipping and um, it's easy to get it right away. Plus, I don't know, I'm kind of into reading on my Kindle lately. I like books too, though. I, it's a, it's a toss-up for me. All right, let's get started. Today's day is day seven, and the title is Step Back and Observe. Here we go. Did you realize that for no reason, no reason you can determine at the time, you will suddenly sometimes doubt your decision to homeschool? It will come as a blindside when you weren't even thinking about it. A random thought will sneak into your consciousness. Her handwriting is wretched. He can't tie his shoes. She told me she hates reading. He is kind of awkward with kids his age. She doesn't have any friends other than our family. She's never interested in history. He hates practicing piano. These little concerns grow as your mind gathers evidence to support the thought. Suddenly, handwriting is the key factor in success or failure as a home educator. You're no longer able to enjoy your child's quirks or successes because you only see this child is socially awkward. When your mind takes a scan for error across the world of your homeschool, try to detach from the conclusions it suggests to you. Step back and observe the thought. Oh, well, there it is. That doubtful idea that threatens to undermine my confidence and energy for homeschooling. Be with it. Make it comfy. So Johnny still can't tie his shoes. How about that? I wonder when he will. I, I wonder if he wants to. I wonder what would happen if I did nothing. Let that thought run alongside all the good happening in your family today. Isn't it great that Johnny identified a new bird today? Look how sweetly he helped his sister get into her high chair. I loved the hug he gave me after lunch. Breathe. <sighs> and get a good night's sleep. Remember that all of us are suddenly knocked sideways by random thoughts on occasion. Thoughts that make us spiral into doubt. Remind yourself that if your child were in school, you would still have random thoughts that tell you you are failing at parenting. <laughs> this is part of life, not homeschool specifically. This mental scan of flaws at home is a part of conscientious parenting. When you are troubled, keep the perspective that you can work on what worries you rather than using that anxiety to beat yourself up or reconsider your commitment to home educate. Guide your mind back to practicalities. Ask questions about what's important, about the strengths of this lack and whether, whether there's a way to foster growth. Remember, everything is less dire the next day after a good night's sleep, breakfast, and a hot drink. Give the doubt room to move and breathe, but don't give it power to make your decisions. That's how you stay the course. Good luck. Quote of the day. I needed to hear this today, right now. I have been having huge doubts this afternoon and was preparing to call our local middle school in the morning. I'm going to take a deep breath and get a good night's sleep. Thank you. Rebecca Jackson, Idolette. 
So here's your sustaining thought for the day, and we have one of these each day. Take a look at your doubt, examine it and mull it over, but don't give in to it. Everything will look brighter after a deep breath, a cup of tea, and a good night's sleep. You're doing fine. Keep going. So I'm seeing a lot of love hearts this morning. So I'm thinking some of you have had doubts. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> so let me tell you a little funny story. So Johanna was the kid who didn't want to tie her shoes. Didn't want to learn. I tried to teach her. She couldn't learn. I tried on the special little, you know, not shoes that they have shoelaces on. Those little like wooden boards that they use in school. We tried on that. We tried on real shoes. I tried giving her shoes that only had laces until that became ridiculous because of course I had four or five kids by then <laughs> and I have time to be tying her laces. So we put her in clogs for years and she learned to tie her shoes in 10th grade. A <laughs> true story. My daughter who is a successful adult living in South America right now and has spent the last year in seven different countries. You know, there are weird things that happen when you homeschool. And occasionally things like shoe tying just never rise to the level of crisis for a homeschooled kid that they do for a child who has to get on the big yellow bus and head off to school all by themselves every day. Does that mean that she wasn't growing in independence or learning other things that kids on the big yellow school bus weren't learning? Well, yeah, all kinds of things. I mean, she wrote a novel, she studied uh, Latin, she was learning vintage dance, she was a highly artistic, creative kid. All kinds of great stuff was going on. She just didn't see the need to tie her shoes, and I could not go through the hand-wringing torture to make it happen. And when she learned, guess where she happened to be? <laughs> she was out of school, part-time enrolled. And somebody was like, your shoes are untied, and she couldn't really do it, and she learned how in about three minutes. I tell this story not to shame Johanna, who may be listening, I don't know, <laughs> but to remind you to scale your doubt and your anxieties proportionately. Home is different than school. I love to beat that drum. This is home. This is not school. This is home. This is not school. So there are going to be these weird anomalies. These things that you thought were evidence that you're doing it wrong are just evidence that you're doing it differently. You're just doing it differently. And some of those things that are really important to you to tell you you're on the right track are the wrong things to be looking at. Because some of what you're creating in your home, you have not been conditioned to appreciate. So I wanna give you a short list of things you can appreciate or look forward to appreciating at the other end. Okay, ready? One. Your kids will actually remember the books you read together or they read to themselves. Every year when John, my kid's dad, would start teaching freshman English at our local university, Xavier University, he would start his freshman class by saying, what did you read last year? What books did you read last year in your senior year of high school? And it was rare that anyone could come up with a book title even though many of them had just taken advanced comp, even though many of them had read multiple books, but they were not on the tips of their tongues. He would have to throw out book titles to try and jar them into memory. And then the enthusiasm level for what they read was sort of like, eh, yeah, it was okay. Oh yeah, I guess I liked it like that. Okay, you have kids who love reading, or at least, even if they don't love reading to themselves, they remember the journey through books. Why? Because it is a family bonding time. It's a time when you get to explore story and have conversations that are meaningful about it. So one difference that you can already appreciate that you may not notice, may not realize is going to be at the other end of this homeschool project is that your kids will actually remember books they've read and books that were read to them because the environment created pleasure from reading, not just requirement of reading. Understand? So that's one. Number two, 
Your kids are going to have shared memories with each other. Think about that. If you went to school, do you have that body of shared memories that your kids are building with each other? I don't have it with my siblings. I was five years older than my sister, a year and a half older than my brother, which isn't that far apart. And yet it was two school levels apart. So it felt like we were in different lives. I mean, we weren't even at the same schools at the same time very much. And I wasn't friends with kids two years younger than me in school. So we didn't build like camaraderie the way that my kids have who spent years and years and years tumbling over each other like puppies. And today as adults, well, they have their own special private message group that their dad and mom aren't invited to <laughs> because they're buddies and they are constantly Snapchatting and Skyping from around the globe to keep that experience going. And they get on airplanes and they travel to see each other. Like, I know some of you as adults are close to one or two siblings, but I have five children and they are all five close to each other. And they communicate and determine how they're gonna celebrate each one's birthday. That's what happens when you're at home. That does not happen as efficiently if they're in school. Another thing to appreciate that is happening at your home that is not happening in your school is that your kids have time. When Jacob created this huge you know, event in my life where he told me that he regretted that I had ever homeschooled him, and the details of that story are on other YouTube videos, so you can find it somewhere else. Maybe Jeanette will remind me where that is. But the basic story is this. He decided he wanted to go to high school and he went. And he decided that high school was so far superior to ever having been homeschooled, he needed to tell me about it over dinner, <laughs> a dinner out at a nice restaurant. And um, of course, that was a heart crushing blow. What I told him at the time was, it's okay with me. You don't have to have loved homeschool. You never have to homeschool your kids. This was just a roll of the dice a decision a parent makes based on all the information I had, all my hopes and aspirations about homeschool. And I don't expect you to ever tell me that you loved it. But what I hope is someday in the distant future when you're old and 40 and you have three kids of your own, that you will say, oh, I get why my mom made the decision to homeschool. I get it. I get what drove her. So because it was a thoughtful decision. This wasn't just a random one. This was something I cared about. And even if you didn't agree with it, and there will be decisions you make for your kids that they won't agree with, at least I want you to understand the thought that went into this decision. So it happened two years later. He was a senior in high school. He was assigned a paper in his English class to write an essay on a short story by William Faulkner. At the time, I happened to have a library card to Xavier University because I had been a graduate student there. So I sent him to Xavier and I said, go look up books here. You won't find anything in the local library. You need a research library. So he goes to the university. He gets in the stacks and starts pulling down books about William Faulkner. And after about 10 minutes, he's got a whole little you know, cubby hole of books, like a circle of books around his body sitting, you know, cross-legged in the middle of the Xavier library. And he feels this sweep of contentment. And he suddenly has this dawning thought, oh my gosh, I want to do a really good job on this paper. I want to read all these books. I want to understand William Faulkner. I want to actually write a great paper, but there's no time because my due date is five days from now and I've got to turn something in and it has to get a good grade. And that's when he said it hit him, oh, this is why my mom homeschooled me. So I would have time to deep dive into my interests right when I'm interested. And he came home and told me. So three things I've told you this morning you can appreciate about your home when you're falling into doubt. One. The very first one is that they remember what they read. Two, they form close connections with their siblings that can last them a lifetime. 
And three, you're giving them the gift of time. The very thing they can never squeeze out of school is time. And all three of those are enough reason to homeschool. All three. And you can think of dozens more, and that's what I'm going to ask you to do today. Can you fill up the comments today with all the ways that homeschool has a benefit that overrides doubt? Where something weird like, oh shoot, my child seems socially awkward. Hello, hint. There are plenty of kids in school who are socially awkward. Haven't you met them? They are ignored. <laughs> this is why nobody talks about it. It's because all the socially awkward kids are ignored. They're stuck in, you know, the chess club or something. It's awful. But at least if you have a child who's a little bit socially awkward, what do they have? A loving family, a community of homeschoolers, you know, that group down at the card shop that they play cards with, they get to find their people without being blame shamed and stuck in a locker, right? So let's fill up this list with the benefits of homeschool so we don't obsess on this one deficit here and there that shows up that reminds us of school, that reminds us of what we wish was happening that we thought was supposed to happen because we have the ghost of public school past whispering in our left ear. You know my method, right? You just flicker off your left shoulder. You're not welcome. <laughs> That's just the whispers of a voice out of body. You know, the disembodied Mrs. Cox with a red pen floating, hovering over your head. Just say goodbye to Mrs. Cox. Say hello to Julie Bogart. Meaning you. That's me saying me hello to me. <laughs> Say hello to Heather Weller. Say hello to Vanessa Eddington. Like that. Say hello to Kirsten Merriman. Say hello to yourself. This is all about building that deeper intuition, that deeper trust, that knowing. Okay? So, unfortunately for me today, my comments are not flowing, and I wanted to read them while I was on here in case there were questions. Um, hold on. I wonder if I can tune in on my other computer. Shall we find out? <laughs> we can find out. Oh, look at all these people who are posting. Yeah, somebody says we get to physically move when he needs to, and the best we get to jump in and answer his many big questions because they are important. Oh, I love that one. Finding friends from a group of homeschool kids that kids enjoy playing with and learning with and the moms have something huge in common. Okay, can I just tell you that is such a huge advantage. One of the things my kids noticed instantly when they went to school is that nobody was friends as families. Everybody was friends with individuals. So it was really hard to have that feeling of like, a whole group of people over to your house. You were always just inviting one kid from one family. And I didn't get to know like the context of who that child was. I didn't get to know the context of what that family was. Do you know what I mean? Whereas in homeschool, you're like, let's have a barbecue and you invite over the dad, the mom, the three kids, maybe their dog. And you sort of have like a picture of the life of the child that your child is friends with. And you get to know the parents. And there becomes like this family community where everybody is known and loved in a group. Oh my gosh, my best years of homeschooling were when my kids were in California. And there were five families that we did everything with. And it was so incredible. We made these dress up costumes for the medieval feast. We had these big parties. And there was always this like amazing energy because husbands, wives, and children were all together. And there were multiple ages. And of course, as you already know, homeschooled kids are fabulous at various ages. They love talking to adults. They have this weird confidence around adults. And I say weird because it's so unfamiliar in the current common culture, right? So there's another thing to appreciate about your homeschool. So today, we are not gonna sow to doubt. We're gonna sow to merit to appreciation, to the things that make homeschooling the reason we chose it to begin with. And I am excited to read this thread, and I will jump in and comment 
um, today. I have a pretty busy day, but I'm going to check in because I love to see what you guys say in the aftermath of all of this. Um, I'm going to show you two things at the end of the day. For those of you who don't know, we have tea cozies that feature our Poetry Tea Time logo for our Poetry Tea Time website. And um, we're almost out of stock. And we wanted you to know that these are still available in case you want to purchase them. You can go to our store, store.gravewriter.com, and go to the Poetry Tea Time icon, and let's sell them out. <laughs> we would love to, especially because someday we might want to do them again. So let's sell these ones out. I love these. This one looks great for fall, and this one is called Bloom Fall, and I think it's just lovely. So we have those. And then the other thing that... You can't read it, but I'm just going to show it to you. Um, we have a Facebook offer out that is a permission slip. And this permission slip is perfect for today because it's all about helping you feel grounded in your homeschool, to really own it, to really make a commitment to yourself that you're not going to let the doubt creep in and rob you of these precious years. You're going to actually enjoy them and enjoy your kids. So take a look for that. Um, you can get there by going to bravewriter.com slash permission. Someone asked me yesterday if she could print it out and give copies to everybody in her homeschool support group. Yes, yes, that is exactly what we're talking about. I think it would be great, like I said the other day on Periscope, to change the culture around homeschool, to be includers, to be permission givers. I think that's what we're all about at Brave Writer. Thanks for joining me today. I love reading this with you. This has been a great start for my day every day, and I hope it is yours. Tomorrow is day eight, called A Worthy Investment, so I hope you'll see me here again at eight in the morning, Eastern, or on replay at whatever time you get to sleep in and get up, because that is another benefit of homeschool. You can sleep in if you want. All right, lovelies, Mwah. live honestly and write bravely. I'm Julie Bogart from Brave Writer. See you tomorrow.